Good evening and welcome back to Talking True Crime with Carrie. Um, I hope you're all keeping well this evening. I'm broadcasting from my bedroom and I it's not Halloween. I'm just not wearing any makeup. So I do apologise if I'm getting the absolute shit out of it. Anyway, today's crime is going to be the Red Gables killings. Um, so yeah, on the 24th of September 1976, police would be called to a burning building, um, the Red Gables Hotel. Um, but they were soon realised that it wasn't just arson, it was actually a murder. Actually four murders being committed at, at the property. Um, and it was just an horrific crime scene. So we'll start off with um, the person responsible. So Neil Rutherford was born on the 15th of May 1922. Now I can't, I couldn't find a lot to do about his like childhood and stuff like that. So there's nothing really on about him. So I'm going to assume that he had a... A, a, a nice childhood that's just because that's just what I'm going to assume because I like to see the best in people um yeah but the earliest thing I could find was that he was in the Royal Navy and um, the British Navy he served um in World War Two and in Korea and he actually served from 1936 until 1959 so he retired in the January of that year 1959 um so he then went on to take over his um, a family business. So his father passed away and he took over the family business, which was called A. Rutherford & Co. I think it was a building merchants. I can't be 100% sure because there's nothing saying what it is actually. But I'm pretty sure it's a building, a building merchants. Anyway, um, that actually went into liquidation in the 1960s. So he went on then to work in the, the hotel. That was his next job afterwards. Um, personal life or private life I should say he was actually married um, in the August of 1948 to a Joan Marjorie Colville Hyde or Colville Hyde um, unfortunately they would be divorced mind, by the May of 1972 so by the 1975 he was actually working in the hotel um, he was a gardener slash shandy man he would do the old, old the little odd jobs around the place and stuff like that um, the hotel the red Gables Hotel was um in Penamine Mawr. I hope I said that right. Because I'm Welsh and it would be terrible if I weren't pronouncing it right. Um and that was actually in North Wales. So the locals were going to describe him as quiet, always on his own, um kept himself to himself. Yeah, they never had any worries or suspicions about him. He was just, you know, just quiet. Um a local landlord from the local pub would say that he would come in for half a Guinness, drink his drink and go. But the time that he did spend it, he would spend pacing the floor. He was quite fidgety. Um, yeah, that was his personality, basically. Um, he took great pride in his gardening. He would often give um, things he'd grown to the locals, so tomatoes, etc. Um, yeah, so he took great pride in that, in his gardening. And like I said, the locals just thought he was, a, apart from being just quiet and on his own, he was, you know, there was no, there was nothing saying indicating that he was going to turn into a murderer, basically. Um, so it was reported that Rutherford had actually vacated the hotel two weeks prior to the incident happening. Um, nobody knows where he went, nobody knows what he did or who he was with, um, but then he actually returned on the day the crime took place, so the 24th of September. Um, the police were called to um, a burning down building but when they got there then they um, realised that there was a casualty outside so there was a man on the road outside with a shot wound to the stomach and he was bleeding from the nose and um, he'd actually told the locals himself that he'd been shot and um, the locals were trying to aid him they were trying to put blankets on and keep him warm and stuff like that and unfortunately a, a doctor who arrived on the scene later on would pronounce him dead um, and this victim would be um, identified as Alistair Alistair Mac McIntyre, who actually turned out to be the son-in-law of the owner of the hotel. Um, yeah, so he was only 33 at the, um, at the age of this. So yeah, waste of a life, bless. Um, once the firefighters um, at the scene secured the, secured the building, um, the police went in and they found four bodies inside the building. So. Yeah, not what they expected at all. Um, so 
it was later revealed that Neil Ruthford had actually shot and killed four people in the hotel. Alistair had managed to escape and get outside, but then obviously later died outside on the road, which is just dreadful. Um, but yeah, he shot three people, set fire to the building, and then turned the gun on himself. Um, so the first one was the owner of the hotel, Linda Simcox. Her body was found in the lounge of the hotel. Um, Lona McIntyre was the daughter of the landlady. She was found upstairs in one of the bedrooms. And there was a friend of the family visiting from Texas, Bay City, Texas. Um, a John Go Green. John Go Green. I'm pretty sure that was his name. John Go Green, yeah. Um, and he was found upstairs as well. I think it was on the landing. Um, and then Ruthford went downstairs. He set fire to the building. Turned the gun on himself in the lounge. And his body was actually found quite close to Linda's. Um, there's absolutely no evidence or suicide notes or anything that indicates why he did this or gives us any information as to why he did it. Um, people have gone in and to look for clues, but there is literally nothing, nothing could be found at all about why this man would have just all of a sudden decided to shoot and kill his boss and her family. Um, so police and investigators have just put it down to he just snapped. Um, I know they say that a lot of um, ex-service men um, suffered a lot of trauma and memories and you know strain from when they were in the Navy or the Army. Um, but yeah, there's just nothing. There's no... There's nothing. There's nothing to say why he did it. Did anything happen beforehand? There's just nothing. Um, so this crime has actually gone down in Welsh history. Um, and even though there was a lot of fire damage, the hotel was actually refurbished and reopened very shortly after the murders. So they basically cleaned the place up and reopened it again. Um, now, business wasn't too bad. Um, people obviously were going there for the reason of seeing or you know, being in a hotel where there was a, you know, a murder. You know, it's the morbid curiosity of people. Um, yeah, and then it closed down in 2004. Um, and the building was left for just over a decade. Just left, graffitied. Um, and then, yeah, and then it was demolished in 2016. And now it's, the property's been renamed, so it's not even under that name anymore. So yeah, that's the um, that's the Red Gables killings for you. So yeah, I will be uploading another one soon. I think you can probably hear my son crying in the background now. So I'm going to go and deal with that, the joys of motherhood. <sighs> Take care everyone, stay safe and wash your hands. Night.